Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar on Freeze API. So in this webinar, we are going to discuss some basic functionalities of how to use Freeze API and how to place orders and also how to fetch historical data and live data using web sockets. Also, we'll be knowing how uh, exactly we can start from scratch for our first time users. So I'll just move on to my Jupyter notebook. So after uh, organizing my uh, Anaconda on my laptop, after installing Anaconda, I have to load my Jupyter notebook, which will show me the interface, uh, one which is visible on our screen right now. So what we will do is I will side by side also open our SDK document, which is like our go-to code document where we get ready-made codes that we have ready for you. We just click on any of the functionality that we need to implement and we will be redirected to the subsequent coding. So going back to the notebook, the first uh, code of line that we need to implement before getting started, like for our first time users, is to install these API. So for that, I will go to the SDK document. I will uh, try as much possible to direct everything using our SDK document so that it becomes very handy for our users. So when we click on these connect SDK, I will be redirected uh, installing the client. I will be redirected to this coding line. I will just copy this and I have already pasted this in my Jupyter notebook as we can see. So when I run this, I get the output that my requirement is already satisfied because I have already installed this on my laptop. After this, I will be initializing my session using my API key, my secret key, and my freshly generated session key for today. So session key is something that I need to generate on a daily basis. It expires before 12 or midnight or for one day. Like I have to generate it every day before beginning my trading for the new day. So now I will, uh, as I have entered my initialized my session also, I will start with the basic coding where I can start with fetching my customer details. So when I want to fetch my customer details, I will click on this code, be redirected to this code of line as we can see. I'll just simply copy and uh, paste this in my Jupyter notebook. Here, instead of your API session, I will be entering my session key, which is the one which is visible on the screen. And now I will run this. So as we can see, we have got the output, which describes the customer details, as in my details. And now I can proceed with my further code of lines. So now I want to check the funds that I have allocated in my account whether I will be able to place account successfully or do I need to allocate some more funds to my account. So I will be going back to this uh, code of descriptions. Here I will go to get funds option and I will just copy this, paste it in my notebook and run this. So as we can see that we have got uh, allocated equity of 1614. And my unallocated balance is 1321. So now I think it's an enough balance for me to place some codes. Or in case I want to allocate some more funds, I will also use this uh, set funds option to exhibit how exactly we can do that. So I will copy set funds coding, will place it in my Jupyter notebook. And here, instead of debit, I will enter credit because I have to put balance in my account mention the amount of balance that I want to add and click on run. It is successful. So now if I run my code to check my balance again, as we can see, it has 200 more allocated equity than it was having before. Okay, so uh, now I will proceed with my placing an order. And here I can see placing in order. I will click on this, be redirected to the code of lines, copy this, paste it in my notebook. And now I can change the fields according to my desire. So here I want to place an order for example, ITC. Exchange code will be changed to NSC. The product is cash. I have to buy. 
order type i will be changing to market i am not mentioning a stop loss quantity for demonstration purposes i am mentioning one i am not specifying any price and validity is deep i will be removing the extra features that i have these are for other type of orders that i want to place whether it be margin options futures etc so for this code of line i will run it and we can see that i have successfully placed an order for itc i can also come to know whether the order has been placed or not by uh running my code of lines get portfolio holdings i will try run get portfolio positions first to understand what positions i have right now and you can see that i have uh, placed an order for itc so here it is i have successfully placed an order i get a detailed list of all the details the price and everything related to that and now which confirms that i have successfully placed an order similarly i want to sell an order so in the same code of lines i will just change by with the action of sell and i will run this i will be able to sell the order hand to hand like it has happened uh, in the market hours now moving on to our second uh, functionality which is to fetch historical data so uh, i would like to redirect this with the help of our article that we have on our website so this is our website futures and options i redirect you via our uh, icic direct home page so icic direct.com is the home page uh, url that we have when we uh, when we reach to this home page we click on the derivatives option and uh, after landing on to the derivatives option we click on these api so this page that we see on our screen is a very functional page for bees api it has got a lot of links to our documentation to our uh, community our sdk document that we are currently referring to we can also refer to this document from here sdk document link is also present here and also when we scroll down we can see three different sections one is of articles one is of videos and one is of faq so for the articles i have an we have an article hosted which is how to download historical data using vz api so we will be taking help of this article to place uh, to fetch historical data in this session so when i open this historical data article i scroll down here i can see line of codes that i can uh, directly copy paste into the notebook and run so here the uh, initial few lines are for initializing my session which we have already done for the day so i will be copying the code of lines from this part till the end of it and i will be pasting it in my notebook So now I will just paste the code that we have copied from there, and now I can just go line by line to check whether the code suits my requirements. So I can see that we have a start date mentioned as nineteenth of April, and uh, time specifically is mentioned. End date is also mentioned. Expiry is mentioned. Time interval is one minute. Strike price is seventeen thousand. I'll just change this to sixteen thousand uh, to exhibit that we can change any of the required fees according to our convenience. And here, uh, I will change this to brief as we have initialized our session. Our session using brief. I'll just uh, show you this. So in the beginning, we have initialized our session using brief. Brief is equal to brief connect. So I'll change. I'll make a change of changing Isaac to brief here. and similarly for the next code of lines also i'll change this to days and uh, after that my interval has been mentioned uh, start date end date stock code exchange code everything i can change according to my requirements i've been keeping this as it is for now uh okay here as well we have the requirements mentioned and uh, here we are directing the code 
to download these files for us, which we can also save it um, in Excel format and can use it according to however we want it to. So when I run this, second, we have mentioned this food price. I think we are getting, okay, so we have to uh, import pandas because we have referred to that library also. So we will just uh, input the code, input import pandas as PD, we will run, sorry, import pandas as PD, and we will run this line of code. And now we will try running this code again. So now, as we can see, we have downloaded the files. How to check these files? So we will go back to our home page of the Jupyter Notebook. And I will scroll down. So as we can see on the screen, these two files, which exhibit that they have been downloaded seconds ago, these files are the ones that have been downloaded according to the code that we have run. Now, when I click on this file, it will give me, give me a detailed list of all the uh, fields that I have entered and I have wanted to generate the historical data. I can also save and download this file in Excel format. Here, um, yeah, so I have downloaded this in Excel format. I'll just open and show this once. Okay, so as we can see, it, it gives us a hands-on Excel file, which we can use it for referring to a particular date, particular time, everything which makes it very handy for us to scroll. Similarly, as we can see, uh, the second file that we had downloaded, Nifty Code Data File. This file also we can download in Excel and we can use it according to our requirements. So we have uh, downloaded the historical data here. Next, we will move on to our functionality of fetching live data using web sockets. So I will just mention the comment of uh, fetching live data using web sockets. For this again, we will go to our SDK document. We will find the code for web sockets. Click on this. We redirect it to this area. Again, we can see that they have initialized the session in the starting, which we have already done for our second uh, session. So I'll just copy the code from here. I'll copy the code completely and I will paste this in my Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so once I have pasted, I can make the changes in this code according to the details that I want to set. To make it more uh, visibly correct, I'll just uh, align it. And now I will make some changes. I want to fetch this top code to mention as Nifty. I want to get options data. Expiry data I'm mentioning as a uh, futuristic October, 31st of October I'm mentioning. This is all an example that I am exhibiting here. Strike price I'm mentioning of 16,000. Right, I'll keep it as Paul and now I'll just run this. Okay. So as we can see that we have started getting the market data ticks. These are the live data ticks that we have fetched using this coding. And these will go on forever. And we can see and fetch the details that we were wanting to using this live data fetching. So now if I want to stop this, all I will do is I'll just uh, copy this line of code, paste it below. And instead of connect, I will change the code to disconnect. So we can see that the market data ticks have stopped coming. So uh, we have learned how to place an order. We have learned how to fetch historical data. We have also learned how to fetch live data using web sockets. Now I will just quickly once go through our uh, page to have a detailed view of the different sections that we have. Okay, so in this features and options page of these API, we have got an option of logging into these API. When I click here, I'll be redirected to the direct login page of these where I can enter my credentials and start by registering an app and then a registered app can be viewed in this section. Coming back to this page, when I scroll down, I view three sections here. 
these sections one sec first section exhibits the articles that we have second section exhibits the video so we have a lot of videos being posted where we hand hold exactly how do we uh, certain a specific requirement for example placing an order fetching live data everything is captured in this particular video these are short videos of 2 3 minutes which will help a user to specifically solve a problem that they are facing while trading also in the faq section we have a detailed faq section where you can resolve your doubts that you have while trading so i think uh, we are done for this webinar uh in this webinar we have covered some topics in the coming webinars we will also try to exhibit some additional functionalities and also talk about our additional sdks that we have we have two three new sdks one for c sharp one for javascript and the others are in process right now so a trader can successfully uh, conduct a trading session using these sdk documents not just for python language for other languages as well so i hope this was a useful session for us all Thank you.